This video is sponsored by Bookwalker. Lord help me! I'm burning an Easter guy hand and I can't find another world to transport myself out of it! I'm just gonna jump into this one. I'm sure you're now as bored as I am just wondering why the isekai genre is still as dominant as it is in anime. It feels weird to think that just a few years ago I'd never even heard of the word. And nowadays I'm more like... See... Fee? See fee? See in an... Me... Me... Cha? Micha? What, 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 what are these make-believe genres that don't exist in anime? And hot of the heels of Slimy Boy worming its way into all our hearts, we now have the rising of the shield hero. Dominating in popularity both in Japan and here in the West, showing us that Isekai is far from dead. And, you know, I've just come to accept that, you know, Isekai doesn't die. It just reincarnates into another show. But his popularity has got me thinking about the dominant journey Isekai has taken in this past decade, and I wanted to use this video not only to discuss what could be appealing about Shield Hero to make it as popular as it is, but also how it fits in with the evolution of the genre so far, and what it could mean for the future. The current Isekai era was arguably started with the massive success of Sword Art Online, and has since then dominated anime, with a big show coming out every year or two, and lots, and lots, and lots of others in between. With how strongly the trailer and cliches have been established in isekai, it's easy to forget that the genre has existed for far longer than that, and it didn't always have the same trademarks it does now. I've actually already made a video detailing the history of it if you haven't watched it already. <laughs> but one important thing to note with the recent successful shows is that they seem to come from a place that understands the core appeal of modern isekai, and in a sense has taken that foundation and built on it in a different way. Konosuba is basically a sitcom set in an isekai. ReZero sets about deconstructing the overpowered otaku protagonist archetype. Overlord asks what would happen if we follow the bad guy, Slime refines all the tropes into a wholesome package, and that brings me to Shield Hero, which follows this evolution the genre has taken. See, one thing that's definitely changed is the general driving force that moves the plot. Early Isekai revolved around the idea of characters trying to get back to their original world, but nowadays Isekai has fully embraced that in the self-insert escapist fantasy, a lot of people wouldn't have much interest in going home. The overabundance of otaku protagonists is what lends itself to making this work, the protagonists are happy to remain in the fantasy world because why would the hero want to return to solitude and boredom when they're living out the rock star lifestyle? The author understands that this is what the audience would likely do themselves if presented with such a world. Shield Hero takes his self awareness a step even further and makes everyone just nonchalantly accept that they've been transported to another world, immediately accept that they're on some kind of world saving quest, and just know that this works like a video game. Despite the fact that he got sucked into a book. Is, is, is anyone gonna address that? No? Alright. Which was actually weirdly refreshing to see. Everyone is so familiar with this ongoing concept that we, as an audience, aren't surprised anymore, and thus having an in-depth explanation and an air of shock would just be jarring and dull. Like, you know that moment in zombie movies when the undead start appearing and eating people and the in-universe characters are like, Bwah? What's this? What are these things? What should we call them? Uh, I know, maybe we'll call them biters, cause, uh, they bite. And you're there shouting, It's a fucking zombie, you dickhead! Just, just kick! How the fuck do you not know what a zombie is? Isekai has become so prevalent that if tomorrow any of you got transported to some fantasy world, I guarantee your first reaction would be, Wait a minute, is this? Is this? <gasps> it's like one of my Japanese animes. And that's basically what's happened here. It's firmly established in Shield Hero that he's familiar with the tropes of Isekai, and that cuts out so much of the needless faff at the beginning and just gets straight to the point. <laughs> and that starting point is that we have four Isekai heroes, each with a different legendary weapon that's been tasked to save the kingdom from a wave of monsters that will attack periodically. And see, that's how you know the source material was written in 2013 because it's just Isekai Horde mode. And if it was actually written recently, we just have a bunch of heroes summoned for Isekai Battle Royale, which I'm surprised doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Wait a minute. Isekai Battle Royale? Oh no! Oh god, it was an Isekai all along! The gimmick this time is that our protagonist has a shield so he can only focus on defense, and as far as gimmicks goes, that's pretty standard compared to the other things we've seen, but really the initial thing that makes shield heroes stand out is how they handle our main character's starting point. Now Fumi, the shield hero, is taken down a few pegs in the first episode, and by taken down a few pegs, I mean he tripped over, fell down a flight of stairs, found out those stairs led to an edge of a cliff, plummeted off the cliff 
into some jagged rocks, got swept away, almost drowning in the ocean before washing up on shore, only then to realize that he never even got laid. He gets absolutely fucked over and dicked on left, right, and center and ends up hated by everyone. Yeah, he quickly does become powerful, but nothing's made easy for him. He isn't this shining prince that saves the day and gets adored by everyone around him. He has to work harder than his peers to make ends meet, and what makes it compelling is that he isn't always acting morally just. He rightly lashes out and uses underhanded tactics against the world that hates him. He buys slaves, and every so often he'll act in a certain way that makes you think, see, I'm not sure if you're just being edgy or just being a dick. Yet when push comes to shove, he still acts more heroic than the other heroes, and you do sympathize with the bitterness he feels from the situation he's been put in. Because he starts at such a deficit, it's entirely up to him and his actions to prove to the people around him what his true character is. And this is the perfect setup to see a really satisfactory hero's journey as he rises up truly winning the hearts of the people. Hence the title, The Rising of the Shield Hero. And that's the call for celebration, people. It's a light novel title that's short, relevant, and encapsulates what the series is about. Oh, what is this revolutionary technique we've never seen in anime before? But I wouldn't be telling the full story if I said that seeing Nafumi's rise is the only reason everyone's watching this, because I think equally important is the promise of seeing certain other people fall. Like, all right, I consider myself a pretty chill and laid back guy. It's hard to get on my nerves, and even if you do, I'm sure we can talk it out and move past any problem we have. I believe the world would be a much better place if we could solve our issues in a civilized manner. But dear god, I hope this fucking bitch dies in a fight! Shield Hero is a rare instance of an isekai that has an actual antagonist in it. Mine and the king make you question whether this kingdom is worth saving or burning everything to the ground, and Chad Spearsman is so frustratingly naive and has that kind of face only a fist could love. Sure, they aren't exactly the deepest and most unique characters out there, but they fill their purpose very well. It's been a while since I've seen characters that has brought up genuine anger and frustration in me. Halfway through episode 4, I thought I would actually need to take some anger management classes or or at least print out a cutout of mine and tape it to a punching bag. But as weird as that may sound, that's one of the biggest strengths of the series. These are characters we love to hate, and seeing any kind of victory, no matter how small, is extremely satisfying. Oh, that's right, Sakate! To address the elephant in the room, there's been a lot of controversy around how mine turned everyone against Naofumi in the first place. What I will say is that it was a very quick and effective method in making you absolutely despise this one character and establishing the setup for the show. And I don't think it's trying to do any more than just that. So I think that's pretty much all the main reasons everyone's watching this show. Oh my god, Alright, alright! It wouldn't be a proper isekai without some seasonal girls to fight over, and this time we of course have the token lolly character in Philo. She's not a 200 year old vampire this time though, so to be safe we'll refer to her by codename Thick Chick. And what more can I really say about Raftalia, except I'm considering starting a cryptocurrency around Raftalia pout faces because dear god this is worth pouring my life savings into. Anyone want to get in on that? No? Well there is the alternative. Bitchcoin. She does have this strange crush thing going on with Naofumi, but it's, it's cute, you know? It's, it's not weird at all, no matter how Raftalia acts towards Naofumi, because Naofumi just sees her as a daughter. And that's completely fine, because she can still call him daddy. Also, I don't really understand how she transformed from a cute lolly to grown woman in the span of a single episode, but you know what? It's probably best not to think about it too deeply. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's anime, so they play by their own rules, so I'm just going to leave it there. It's not worth looking into, so I'm going to do this sensible thing and just move on. And that's so far what I can say about why people are being drawn to this show, but as revolutionary as I wished I could say Shield Hero is, it's really not, because to put it in a nutshell, Shield Hero is basically what happens when a character enters the isekai loading screen and is like, alright, all, all what, what do I want to do this time? I've done that, done that. Fuck doing that again, or, or, or I'll just choose this one. It has its subtle differences, but it's essentially the same package we've all seen before. He'll kick some ass, impress some girls, everyone's gonna get really excited to see what happens next, and then we're gonna be waiting for a season two that's never gonna happen. And to me, its immense popularity shows that despite how saturated Isekai has been over the years now, we still apparently aren't bored of it yet. Yes, as much as we complain, we're still Isekai trash. So the question that comes to mind is, what's going to be 
next? If we think of the modern roots of the genre of 90s isekai and stuff like Escafone being the first generation, and the big breakout hit setting the trend on fire like SAO being the second, then what I've found is all these big isekai from these past years would be the third and current generation. ReZero, Overlord, No Game No Life, Konosuba, Slime, Shield Hero, every single one of these bigger shows we're familiar with began publishing as light novels around 2012 and 2013. Hot off the heels of SAO's adaptation blowing up the community. They are isekai that have essentially been inspired by isekai and have each taken their own spin on the genre while very much adhering to the core foundations that were laid out. Some satirized and subverted tropes, some refined the tropes, and some were a mixture of the two. If there is going to be a fourth generation of isekai anime from some of the newer light novels I've seen floating around, concepts are going to get even fucking weirder. If we look further forward this year, there's going to be isekai scattered in every season, and if we look at the light novel world, the genre still completely dominates new titles coming out, so however you look at it, I think the message is loud and clear. Isekai is here to stay, and right now it's still stronger than ever. To a much lesser extent, this almost feels like what happened with comic book movies and Hollywood. I remember when The Dark Knights came out, there was a consensus that this was the peak of comic book movies, and audiences were going to slowly start to lose interest because of how saturated the genre had become. And just as that happens, Marvel came along. And I don't think I need to tell you what happens next. So as long as it's here to stay, let's just all embrace the isekai trash within us, because even though it's overwhelming right now, if you're bored of it, there are plenty of other genres you can watch in anime, because not everything is an isekai. Why would you do this? Why? No, no, no one asked you. Can, can you just go away and... You know what? I'm gonna let it slide this one time, but can we just please stop doing this? Right. I'm done. I'm done. You can't keep getting away with this! Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you to Bookwalker for officially sponsoring this video. You can read ahead in the manga or light novel in Shield Hero on Bookwalker in the link below. I know this is a bit sudden, but the first volume is available for absolutely free right now, but you only have about two days to claim that, so if you want that, go get it right now. Or if you just want to find out all the spicy things that are going to happen, click the link below and get reading. Also, every isekai I mentioned in this video, from SAO to ReZero to Konosuba to Overlord, is also available on their platform. So if you want to further your isekai fix and you're a new user, you can use coupon code GIGAK for $5 off, which basically means you get another volume for hardly anything. Anyway, that's it for me though. I've been GIGAK and I'll see you all next time.